So we've learned some special factorizations like the difference of squares and a perfect square trinomial. We've seen that you can factor out GCDs, but it turns out that factoring quadratics can be a little bit more difficult than that. Um, because after all, when you multiply out a binomial, if you had like something like x minus two times x plus three, when you multiply these things out, you're gonna get an x squared, which tells us we're gonna have a quadratic here, right? You're gonna get x times three, you're gonna get a negative two x, and then you're gonna get a negative six right here. Combining these middle terms, you're gonna end up with x squared plus x minus six. And this is what we typically refer to as the FOIL method, right? Well, the thing is, if I gave you x squared plus x minus six, and I had to factor that, we have to essentially reverse this FOIL method to get back the factorization that's up here. How does one do that? Well, if we do this process backwards, the idea is this middle term was actually the combination of two like terms. So we have to replace the x with a 3x minus a 2x, and then we factor from there, right? But how does how do you decide what to break these things apart from? Where did the, you know, what clues do we have about these numbers three and negative two right here? Well, you'll notice that the three and two came about from taking the product of the outside terms and the product of the inside terms, for which you take the first term times uh, the first term times the last term, that's where the 3x came from, right? And then you take the inside terms, we'll throw them together to get negative 2x right there. So, okay, the this is the combination of the outside and the inside terms, but can we find any evidence about them? Well, what we have in front of us are the first terms and the last terms, the negative 6 right here. And so it turns out that we can kind of work this thing backwards in the following way. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers right here, the first terms and the last terms. We're going to multiply them together. You take the coefficient there. Uh, you take 1 times negative 6, and that's going to give you a negative 6. Taking this negative 6, we're going to look for another factorization of negative 6, um, such as 3 and negative 2, right? Notice that's negative six factors as three and negative two. The significance of this though, is that when you combine negative three and two, three and negative two together using addition, three minus two equals one. So when it comes to this reverse FOIL process, what we wanna do is we're gonna take the product of the leading coefficient and the constant term. In this situation, this would give us a four, a negative four, two times negative two equals negative four. We then have to look for factors of negative four that add up to be this middle number right here, the three. And so this takes a little bit of experimentation, but notice that four times negative one multiplies to give you negative four, but it adds together to give us three. And so such a pair, four and negative one, we're gonna refer to this as a magic pair. And I like to think of like Hercules is going to search for the magic pair upon the tree of Poseidon or something like that. I know it's not the right type of pair, but you get the idea. It makes it much more majestic that way. But we're looking for this magic pair, a pair of numbers which will multiply together to give us the first and last term, but adds together to give us the middle term. Because if we do that, we're gonna replace the middle term with this magic pair. So we're gonna see that 2x squared plus 4x uh, plus a negative x right here, minus two. We're gonna break it up here because after all, if you put these things back together, four x and negative x gives you a three x. So we've just broken the number up like that. Well, why are we gonna do that? What do we do next? The thing to do next is we use a technique which is called factoring by groups. If you have uh, four terms in your polynomial, you're gonna put the first two into a group and you're gonna put the second two into a group. That's all there is, the first two and the last two. And then amongst those groups, you look for the GCD. So we couldn't find a GCD for the whole thing, right? 2x squared, 3x minus two. There's no factor of x that's common to all of them, and there's no common divisors, two, three, two, right? We can't pull a GCD out of everything, but if you look at the groups, right, the first group, 2x squared plus 4x, you could factor out a 2x. That would leave behind x, plus two. And then looking at the second group right here, we could factor out a negative one. That's common to both of them. Take out the negative one, you're left with an x plus two. And then notice what we have here is that what's left over is the x plus two and the x plus two. Even though it's a binomial, this is now a common factor, which we can then factor out from those. And this then gives us 
the 2x minus 1, and then this also gives us an x plus 2. And this gives us the factorization. This is what we mean by this reverse FOIL method. You look for a magic pair, and then you factor by groups to finish this thing off. And if you have any doubt if this is the right factorization, work it out again. Uh, 2x times x is an x squared. Uh, negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. And then you're going to get a 2x times 2, which is a 4x, a negative x, which adds together to give us a 3x. And Bob's your uncle. That is exactly the thing we started off with. We have the correct factorization. And so when we set this thing equal to 0, we can now apply the zero product property, zip zappities up, to see that 2x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. Solving the first one, we add 1 divide by 2. We see that x would equal 1 half. And then the other one, we just subtract 2, we're going to get that x is negative 2. And so we've now found the correct solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, so that, that, that's kind of a, a, you know, it can be a challenging concept at first. Let's do another example to illustrate this. Let's solve the quadratic equation 2x squared equals x plus 3. When it comes to quadratic equations, we always put it in the standard form first. We need to move all of the terms to the other side of the equation. So we get 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. You don't have to put things on the left-hand side, but I really like the leading coefficient to be positive. Uh, that is the coefficient of the x squared. So that's why I moved everything to the left-hand side. So now I do a quick run through. I don't see any GCDs to factor out. Um, there's no special factorization. This is not a perfect square trinomial. Difference of squares only applies when you have two terms, a binomial. So that doesn't apply in this situation. So we're going to have to do this reverse FOIL process. So look at the first coefficient and the last coefficient. This is going to give us 2 times negative 3, uh, which is negative 6. We need to find factors that add up to b factors of negative 6 that add up to be negative 1. Now, this is really close to what we did earlier, right? Um, you'll actually notice that, wait a second, we already have a magic pair, right? Notice that negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. Oh, sometimes the magic pair is just staring in front of you. Um, you just have to pluck it. It's this proverbial low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Horrible pun, I know, but it, it, it'll leave a message in your mind there. So we're going to break the negative 1 up to be negative 3x with a 2x. So you're going to get 2x squared minus 3x. That's the first group. And then the second group is going to be a 2x minus 3. This is equal to 0. Now, sometimes people ask, well, which, which of the numbers do you put first? Should I do negative 3 and then 2 or 2 and then negative 3? It turns out it doesn't matter. You'll get the correct factorization whichever, uh, whichever way you put them. The intermediate steps will look a little bit different, but in the end, you'll get the correct thing. So when you look at the first one, what's your common divisor? The biggest thing you can pull out is an x. So we factor out an x that leaves behind 2x minus 3. When you look at the second one, what's the biggest thing you can take out? Well, we're tempted to say, oh, there's nothing common to both. I can't take out anything. But that's not exactly true. We can always take out a 1 because, again, when you, when you factor out a 1, it doesn't really do anything. So when you say, like, there's nothing in common, what you really mean is that 1 is the greatest common divisor. And as we must factor out something, we're going to factor out a 1. But this is fortuitous because since if, you've, if you chose your magic pair correctly, then these terms right here should be identical. And if we factor out the 2x minus 3 as that common divisor, you're going to get 2x minus 3 and then x plus 1 equals 0. And so then by the zero product property, zip zappities up, we're going to get that 2x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And solving these two linear equations, the first one will add 3, divide by 2. We're going to get that x equals 3 halves. And then for the second one, you're just going to minus 1 on both sides and see that x equals negative 1. And this is going to give us the solution here. And so this idea of reverse foiling, that is you find a magic pair and then use the factoring by group techniques, this can help us factor many, many, many quadratic polynomials and help us solve many, many quadratic equations. It does depend on the fact that we have to be able to find a magic pair, which is not an, always an easy thing to do, which is why we'll present some alternative methods uh, shortly. But when a magic pair is easy to find, then it turns out this is a very, very effective way of solving a quadratic equation.